Hello, welcome to my video, Sew Art Beginner Basics, which will cover the very basics of how to use the program. In this video, we will create a basic shape using the shape tool in Sew Art. We will digitize that shape using the default fill pattern and save the image and the design. Then we will create another simple shape and we will fill it with a different pattern. Along the way, I'll explain what some of the basic settings mean and how to use them. Let's get started. We are going to first create a shape. We're going to do a circle. Over on the toolbar, right where my mouse is, you'll see that there is a shape tool. We're going to click on that with the left mouse button, and you'll see that we have some basic shapes over here on the left side, on the right side, sorry. And there's a few you can scroll down. We're going to go ahead and click the circle, and you'll see that over here on the canvas, we do have a circle. Obviously, I want to make it a little bigger so you all can see it, and we want to be able to see what stitches are. You can also do ovals just by stretching this out, so however you want to do it. I just dragged it with the mouse and then released it when I got it where I wanted it to be. Since I have my shape created, I'm now going to turn off the shape tool. It is off. And when you're using the shape tool, you don't have to worry about there being extra colors, but I will show you just very quickly how you can quickly reduce the colors. If you click on the little palette item here, you'll see enter number of colors for image. In this case, there are three images in this. We have the background of white, we have the orange of the inside of the circle, and we have a blue outline. This is all we need. Uh, often when you are working with an image that you've gotten from the web, you may see things that are 200 and some odd colors. Those are going to need a lot more image editing before they are ready to create a stitch file. So we have this one ready to do a stitch file. What we'll do is we're going to come right over here to the little sewing machine. We're going to click that. This is how you create your stitches. Up at the top here, you're going to see that we have a new toolbar. It is set automatically for fill and automatically for default fill, which is just back and forth stitching. You do not generally want to do the auto sew. It often does not come out very well. I recommend using the manual stitch creation. Underneath here, you will see that there are some settings. Separation, length, and angle. The separation refers to the distance from one row to the next row of stitching. So the larger the number, the farther away each row of stitches is from the one previous. So the smaller the number, the closer the stitches, or the, I'm sorry, the closer the rows, the closer the rows, the more dense your design will be. The next one is length. This is the distance between the stitches within each of those rows. The longer or the larger the number, the further away the stitches are from each other. So the longer the stitch will be. You do not generally want to have a really long stitch length here, which will cause a loopy design and will be subject to snagging. Um, 20 is a good standard length. I'm pretty much working with default settings most of the time. The angle allows you to change the angle the stitches will run. Zero will run your stitches completely horizontally left to right. 90 degrees will make them vertical top to bottom. And you can also change to such as a 45 degree angle. A positive 45 will run your stitches lower left to upper right. A negative 45 will run your stitches from upper left to lower right. So you can play with those as you go, and any number in between those. 
Um, you will find as you progress through learning in the Sew Art program that using different stitch angles will give you more dimension to your embroidery and it will also help you with gap issues between joining areas of stitching. Okay, we are gonna go ahead and digitize this. We're gonna ignore this blue outline. We're not gonna work with outlines today. What I'm going to do is I've got it set for fill, I've got it set for default, and I've got, we're just gonna go ahead and use the default settings. They'll seem to work pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and you'll notice that my pointer is now a little needle once I have clicked on that sewing machine. Wherever you click your, your little needle is where your stitches are going to begin. That's called the seed point. So if you're doing stitches that go left to right, you probably want to start where it would make sense for those to start either over on the right hand side or over on the left hand side, somewhere near the top. You don't want to just click somewhere in the middle because your stitches would start in the middle and we don't want that. So I'm going to click right up here at the top. And you'll see that the screen has changed. I now have this weird little pattern in here. You'll also notice over here on the right hand side that I have a color stop. I have one color stop because I've only clicked one color. If I decided, oh, I clicked at the wrong place, you can always click clear stitches and start over. You don't have to do your image over again. At this point, it is digitized. Easy as that. So at this point, we will go ahead and save this. I'm going to click file and I'm going to click save as. And I'm going to get a window up here. And you'll notice that the first thing that comes up is it says save image file. Save image file is what we want to do at this point. If you're working with a more complicated design and you've done a lot of editing on your design, reduced the colors and done some artwork on it, you'll definitely want to save that because then you can bring that image back in and you can work on it further later. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this untitled and I'm just going to go ahead and put it on my desktop. So I'm just going to go ahead and click save. You can name it whatever you'd like. After you've saved the image, you'll see it comes up with save embroidery file. This is your stitch file that will go to your embroidery machine for stitching. I'm going to, again going to go ahead and put this on my desktop. You'll notice I have PES selected. That's the format that my particular machine uses. If you click this, you'll have other options. Click whatever you need that works for you. And I always use Sulky Rayon, that's my thread of choice. And these other things, I just, actually I don't wanna, I, I always unclick the join threads. I would rather do that in my editor, so what Pro. Um, once I've had a chance to look the design over, I may not want those sections joined. I may want to change colors of an area or something like that. So I leave those separate. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and save this as untitled and it comes up and it says it was successfully saved and it will show you a little picture of the digitized design up at the top. I'm going to go ahead and close, acknowledge that and close it. And I'm going to go ahead and click clear stitches. That got rid of my stitches. And I'm going to take us out of the, sew, the stitch creation mode. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this. And we're going to go ahead and do a square this time. I guess I need to go new, sorry about that. Okay, I'll go ahead and click the shape. I'm gonna go ahead and do that square. I'm going to grab the corner and bring it down just like that and release the mouse button and then turn off the stitch or the shape creator. Colors are okay, so I don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the mode for creating my stitches. And this time I'm going to do fill, but I'm gonna change it to a pattern. And let's go ahead and do a heart pattern. This is going to create a different texture within the stitching. So I'm all set. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and change the angle. 
so that you can see what it does. We'll go back to 45 degrees here. Since I'm going 45 degrees, as I've already mentioned, 45 degrees goes this direction. So I'm going to seed it from right down here. I'm getting as close to that blue as I can. And if you accidentally click the blue, just as I did here, all you have to do is you can, if it's the first one, just click clear stitches. You can also right click on that color and click delete color. And if that particular one is gone. So if you're working on a more complicated design and you decide that, oh shoot, I shouldn't have clicked that then, I should have done this one first. You can also rearrange your color stops later in your editor. But if you wanna redo it or if you forgot to change the angle or something like that, just delete that one color, no problem. Okay, so I'm going to click the orange right down there. And you'll see, you can really see that little heart design and you can see that it's on an angle, a 45 degree angle. So I've got my stitches created and now I'm just gonna go right up here and I'm gonna do save as. Always do a save as so that you're not overwriting previous things. I'm going to do untitled square as my image. And I guess I need to put that on my desktop too. And I'm gonna save it. And it brings the same file name as your image name is in here. I'm gonna uncheck that again because I don't want the same colors, just, just a good habit to be in. And then I'm going to go ahead and click save. And it's creating my stitches and it, and it saved, good, say okay. And those two are done. Now I'm on my desktop and I'm looking for those designs. Untitled square and untitled, those are my two designs. There's my circle. I'm gonna open it. I'm just doing this so that you can see. And I'm gonna go up here and view texture is off, which is good. I'm gonna zoom in really far so you can see you see all those little squares right there are the stitch points for this design. And you can see that this is pretty nicely filled in. This is the one that had the straight across left to right fill. And I'm going to go ahead and close that one. And I'm going to go ahead and open the square. Untitled square. There it is, and you can't really see the hearts here, but when you start zooming it in, there it is. The design is created by where the stitch points are. So all, all of where the little hearts are, that's where the needle's going through the fabric. And of course there's some in between and there's the underlay stitching in there too. I'll zoom in a little more so you can see that better. And there it is. And you can see that this looks like a fairly well filled in design. Always do a test stitch of your designs before you do them on something important like a shirt or a towel. Use a scrap of fabric that is similar to the fabric that you will eventually stitch the design that you're digitizing onto. Um, also make sure you use the same hooping and method and stabilizer as well. That's very important. You can see this came out pretty nicely. If you find some, you, you often will find some little odd things, like there's a little gap right there. You can very easily use some editing tools that are in Sew What Pro to fix those. Um, nothing usually, I mean, other than these very, very, very simple shapes, which seem to come out pretty well, um, designs often will need to be adjusted in an editor before you're ready to stitch. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. I hope that you have found it helpful and informative. You are invited to join the Sew Art Digitizing group on Facebook. It's a great place to ask questions and get advice about using Sew Art. A link to this group will be included in the description of the video on YouTube. Happy digitizing!